Hi, this is Donna from Bruce Funds. And when I'm not helping people get tickets to a Springsteen show, I'm listening to the great podcast, Set Lusting Bruce. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Set Lusting Bruce, your podcast all about Bruce Springsteen, his music, and mostly his fans. I am your host, Jesse Jackson, and joining me today is a repeat guest, um, my favorite, and don't tell this to the other bloggers, but my favorite Springsteen blogger, uh, Peter. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Jesse, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. Oh, yeah, it's been about a year since we talked, I think. Close wow. to it, yeah. That flies. Yeah, it does. Um, so, what you been up to? How was your summer? Very good, very good summer. I can't believe it's over already, but, you know, I had I had my tickets in hand to, uh, to see Bruce at Foxborough, so I, I had that to look forward to all summer, which is a good feeling. Um. Did yeah, and just a great write up, and I, I want to talk about the show and this latest set of you know this this leg of the concert because it's really been something pretty special, don't you think? Uh, it, it's really really interesting where it has gone, you know, because of course you know when it started it was the River Tour. I mean, it couldn't have been any more River than it than it was when it started. You know, he's doing the whole album straight through. Um, You know, to the chagrin of some, you'll remember, some people at the beginning were like, oh, you know, I like the spontaneity, I don't like when he does full albums, and other people, you know, me among them, were just excited to, you know, have that opportunity to see that that album straight through. Um, And sort of without ever announcing that there was a change coming or, or that, you know, he was going in a different direction, you know, he goes to Europe and suddenly... Well, it's river focused, but it's not the full album anymore, and you know, and and it gradually sort of morphed um, into what it's been since he got back to the U.S., which is much more of a, you know, uh, memoir tour, you know, a, a sort of full career, even beginning of career, you know, um, focus tour rather than than anything having to do with the river. They just didn't bother to to change the name. So to sort of see what he, uh, you know, has has turned it into. In these last, you know, ten or so shows since he got back to the states, have been really interesting to watch. Yeah, Peter, did you make any of the pre, you know, the River shows? I did. I saw him at the Boston Garden. I think it was in February, um, and that was great. I, I mean, I was so glad I, I did get a chance to do it. And and so many of those River songs are so rarely performed, and I'd certainly never never seen, you know, so many of them. I mean, the price you pay, you know. Um, you know, you you name it. There's there's a bunch of them on there that were on my list. You know, and it's a, and it was an interesting feeling going in, knowing, oh, I'm going to hear Cadillac Ranch, and you know, and I'm going to hear the price you pay and drive all night. You know, some of these, you know, that you sort of chase for years, hoping that you'll get them. So it was a, sort of a weird feeling going in, knowing that you'd hear them, but the experience of of hearing that whole album straight through. I, I I'm, you know, I thought it was, you know, it was, it was a great choice on his part, and I, I really enjoyed. Uh, seeing it, and of course, Bruce being Bruce, he basically puts on a whole other concert once he finishes the album. You know, he anybody does. else would, you know, would, would stop saying good night, thanks everybody, and that would be the end. He plays for another hour, um, you know, or, or more with, you know, covering the rest of his career. So it, it was really sort of a best of both worlds. It um, was, and you know, he much to some people's criticism. You know, it there was not a lot of surprise. There was the river, and then he kind of had a core set of greatest hits live that he kind of did. Then he threw in a, you know, a speed ball every once in a while, a little curveball. But mostly, it was a pretty consistent, you know, set list. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I ended up going um, four times. Uh, wow. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I 
I made Pittsburgh, and then my wife had bought me Louisville for Christmas and had not told me. And because she wanted to see, she wanted me to see him more than once on the tour. And then when he came to Dallas and Oklahoma City, um, we went. Uh, my son went with me to Oklahoma City, and I went to Dallas by myself. And, you know, she asked, she goes, are you tired of seeing the same show? And I said, no, because every time I see him do the river live, I pick up something else. Mm-hmm. Um you know, before the show, I was not a super fan of Independence Day. You know, I liked it well enough, but seeing him perform it live and him talking the story of his father really moved it up in my – how much I loved it. Yeah, they, I mean, and, and that happens so often, I think, um, at Springsteen shows where, where a song, um, you know, takes on a whole new context. Um, sort of in the context of the show and of how he performs it and, if, and of the story he may tell with it. Um, and it's interesting you say that. I only saw it once, and I know a lot of people, um, you know, when you announce that, were like, oh, well, I'm, you know, I, now I don't have to go four times <laughs> because, yeah. you know, once will be enough. But I, I, I've heard that from other people, what, what you just said, that there were, you know, that it was worth it for the, the to sort of pick up the nuances and, um, and for those occasional, you know, curveballs, and um, you know, I remember he did um, roulette in Boston, which was a, which was a surprise. And you know, you never, you just never know, you know, yeah. what he's what he's going to throw in, you know. But I think I think you're right. It's you know, it was just a, an incredible opportunity, and and just something rare that, um, you know, it's more common seems these days that artists are revisiting their old albums. Um, but this seemed like less of a stunt than it is for some others. Yes. Um, like he really wanted to revisit that album and that time and what it meant in the context of, of his his work. And that's, I think, why it's, it's sort of morphed into this. You know, clearly he was, we know now, he's been writing his um, autobiography for seven years. So he's having to have been reflective that whole time. Um, and so, you know, as he was getting this river tour together, you know, he was deep into that process. And you could sort of see his mind working through that when when you're watching him do the show. Um, you know, talking about the context of these songs and what he was trying to do and what it meant, you know. So it was, you know, I, I think it was very much uh, a, a uh, it was sort of a grand experiment that in my mind worked very well. I, I totally agree, Peter. And, you know, one of the things that I thought was interesting is the thought of someone at his point in his adulthood, you know, in the in his 60s and you know, on the second half of his 60s, looking back at an album he did, you know, late 20s, 30s, um, gives you that kind of mirror image of, you know, as an adult, now as a, in a lot of ways, a child, a young man, and um, gave him some interesting thoughts. Um, how did you think the band sounded? I mean, I, I'm always impressed. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know. Yeah, that's um, my softball you know, question for you. <laughs> yeah, it's like um, back in in uh, February and again last night. You know, I, I'm looking at these guys. And like you say, you know, we we give Bruce a lot of credit for being, um, you know, being his age and being able to perform like he does. And of course, he, you know, um, you know, he's the front man. He's he's arguably working working the hardest. But the, you know, these guys are all about his age. They you know, are just, it's amazing, you know, there's the musicality of it, of course, but just the stamina that they're able to, you know, exhibit night after night, you know, Max in particular, I mean, I watched this guy, you know, pounding away, um, you know, we know he's had issues, he's had back issues, you know, he's had hand issues, you know, you know, he has to, you know, put his hands in, you know, ice water after the show for an hour, um, it's it's an amazing performance, and they're all, you know, Neil's guitar work it has been, you know, I mean, he's he's you know sort of woefully underused, um, you know, and you know, there's there's a lot of people who can play the guitar on that stage. I get that. Yeah, he's, exactly. You know, he's an amazing talent, and when he can shine, like you know, in his his um, because the night solo is, is obviously an amazing um, yeah, example of that that that's come out of, um, out of this tour. Um, you and know, I think uh, the Purple you know, Rain Gary solo, been, right? What's that? The Purple Rain solo. Purple Rain, yes, that yeah. was yeah. I listened to that uh, just yesterday. Thanks for the free download, Bruce. Yeah. Um, 
Um, and I think, you know, and I, I, I did want to shout out to, to Gary. Um, I think he, you know, people, people don't remember poor Gary. But he's right. He has an amazing job there. He looks great, first of all. He does. Um, and um, you know, I noticed in particular last night on the on the songs from from Wild the Innocent. I mean, just just his his work was was tremendous. Um, and I liked he even got a um, you know Patty wasn't there, so um, he got to take her line from out in the street. Yes. Um, it's like good good for you, Gary. And his his solo album is excellent, by the way. We don't. I was going to ask you about that. I love that album. Um, yeah, it really. I think it's. I would. You know. I don't. I, I'm not a a uh, sort of a scholar on Neil's solo work, so right. I don't want to start comparing, contrasting. But you know, in terms of um, you know a lot of the the solo stuff, I think it's it's one of the best that anybody in the band has put out. I you know I totally agree. That little bit of Cajun feel on a lot of the songs and. Um, it's a fun album. It's a, yeah. you know, truly kind of a rock and roll. Let's just go and have a good time. I I agree. Um, you know, and I was lucky enough, and I'm hoping to get Jim Rotolo on the show, but I was seeing him on uh, Wednesday night before the Thursday MetLife um, stadium show. I was there. I made that show. First time seeing him in Jersey, which is a whole other discussion we need to have, right? But and <laughs> and Jim brought up the fact that you know you think about as you said Max with his back problems, just beating that drum and the playing the you know the bass and the guitar and um, poor. You know, Roy banging on the keyboards. You know, how long can they do it? And then what do you do if – how do you hire another bass player for the E Street Band if Gary Talent's sitting at the house, right? Right. I mean, at, at this stage, you know, it was one thing, you know, in 1984. Yes. Um, you know, when Steve – we decided to, to step away for a while. Um, you know, I mean, he – you know, he wasn't going to stop. <laughs> Right, you know, and it was you know, and it was a, uh, it made sense for for him to do that at that time. But yeah, it would you know, obviously people have been replaced, people you know, that yeah. and you know our losses and, um, you know, and and it and it still if it goes on and it works and Bruce is the glue. But um, it, it, you know, right at at um at what point you know does it not be is it not the E Street Band anymore? Yeah. Um, and then it's a you know it's a question nobody sort of wants to contemplate. We hope we yeah. don't have to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we had talked about in the earlier um, discussion, because I've had this with other people about, you know, the E Street Band on steroids compared to the core East, the the slim down E Street Band, which is hilarious when you see how many people are on stage, right? Right, right. Um, I was this ama- is not a four piece combo. No, it wasn't, <laughs> you know. to Peter at all. I was impressed how large they sounded in all the shows I saw and how good the sound was in, at MetLife. You know, I'm in an – that was my first arena show. You know, they we're, I'm on the end zone, the opposite end zone, you know, so they all look like little mice, uh, though the computer screens – you know, the screens were fine so I could see. But I was amazed at how big they sound. What what's your yeah. thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean the consensus has been the sound has been better. I don't know what they've done. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know it is hard in those outdoor venues, but um, I would agree that, that that the sound was good. And um, yeah, I didn't like. I loved the horns um, on the Wrecking Ball. I did tour. too. Um, and, and some of the songs in particular, you know, I remember the way that he used them at the end of Thunder Road was was just spectacular. And um, you know, I, I enjoyed their. Um, you know what they brought to the to the table, um, but I didn't I had I didn't miss them oddly. <laughs> you know when um, in these last couple of shows because you're right I, I felt like um, you know the, the the band is is just bringing it. Um, you know right they, they feel very full. There's not um, you know I heard some people were saying um, Kitty's back. It's not the same without the horns. You know you shouldn't even bother doing it without the horns. You know I, I don't agree. I I feel like these guys have the chops and. 
they, they you know, I, I didn't personally, I, I didn't miss them. I, I thought, um, you know, it, it was, um, you know, it was a little different, but it really, um, you know, to me was as engaging as, as ever. Um, and, you know, and that says something, I, you know, I think Jim, Jim is right that they, you know, they, they really are, uh, you know, it's amazing what they're able to bring and we can only hope that they can, uh, they can keep it up. Oh, I agree. And, um, you know, there was a blurb, not that wasn't in the Vanity Fair article itself, but another little blurb, I guess, they posted online about him doing a two-hour show and the thought of would he ever want to do that, right? And he talked about, well, you know, I guess I could, but I just don't know if I could, and, you know, and – and um so I do think that would be interesting that if because of age and health reasons you did a slim down show, which for anyone else, a two-hour show, this is amazing. And for a Springsteen show, you kind of go, wow, oh, that's all we got? Well, and, he's, and he spoils everybody else for us. Oh, absolutely. You know, you know I, saw, I remember seeing Tom Petty at Fenway Park a year or so ago. Um, who I'd never seen. I'd somehow, he's one of these people our paths never managed to cross in all these yeah. years. Uh, so I was determined to get to that. And it was a great show, you know, a great two, two, slightly more than two hours. And I can help it at the end saying, that's it? He's, yeah. He's leaving? Because yeah. I'm used to this, you know, somebody who just keeps going until they they can't yeah. go anymore. You know, he'd had Steve Winwood had opened. It was a good, you know. Yeah. I, really, there's, I had no right to complain. Um, but, um, but it's true, you know, and it would be so interesting, you know, and I had thought, I remember thinking years ago, you know, well, someday when Bruce is 67, <laughs> um, he'll probably be doing two hour shows and maybe, you know, and he'll be able to get the, you know, you know, prime opening acts, you know, people, um, you know, maybe slightly younger than him, but who are still big names and maybe that's how he'll do it. Um, but here we are, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was probably 15 years ago I said this, here we are and he's, his shows are longer than ever, and not, you know, and it's not just, that, you know, several people brought this up, it's not just that they're long, you know, it's not just that they're killing themselves to keep going, and, you know, and they're going through the motions, I mean, they're bringing just as much sort of energy and emotion and excitement and making it as relevant as it's ever been, um, which is, is amazing, you know, that's, I think, you know, your scholars will debate, <laughs> you know, yes. we'll study this. You know, music scholars who used to come. How how are they doing this? How were they able to do it? And it's it's you know I think we're lucky to be able to you know sort of bear witness to it while it's happening. I, I have shared this before, but I'm sure you haven't heard this. But I you know I my son and I had flown up to Jersey. Linda was nice enough to let us go, and um, we went. And we attended that August 25th show. At the time, it was one of the, the – it set the longest American record. How little did we know how quickly that record would fall? And it was the first time ever at a Springsteen show when it was over, I said, yep, I'm, that was pretty much perfect. Like, you know, I, you know, I, I didn't have – there were certainly songs that I would have loved to hear – but it wasn't that – even, you know, like when he's hitting 310, like when he's been in Dallas in the past, you're like, oh, I wish the crowd had been better so he would have gotten more into it. And, you know, and like at the River Tour, when he hits 320, 325, I was like, one more, Bruce, one more. And this one I was like, yep. I mean if he comes out, I'm going to listen. But I kind of <laughs> felt like – he kind of left it all on the stage, and I'm, I'm, I'm. If I asked for her now, I'd be greedy. Yeah, yeah. I think um, that that's absolutely true because you know we, we can't do. You know, I wrote this. I don't know. You know, I wrote a couple of weeks ago, and I had no idea it was going to uh, strike as much of a nerve as it did. I wrote sort of a uh, you know a satirical column from Bruce's middle age fans yes. to Bruce saying, "Slow it down, will you?" We can't yeah. do this anymore. We're exhausted, and um, and it really. I mean, I was amazed at how much it caught on. I think it, it's probably uh, my, um, you know, in terms of of um, web traffic, my biggest of the year. Because uh, clearly, people are saying, like, on the one hand, we don't want them to stop. On the other hand, we, you know, we ain't that young anymore. And yeah, exactly. Um, you know, after that four hours, I, I felt. I mean, I got home. You know, uh, Foxborough was not around the corner from me. Um, 
and uh, not easy to get to. So I, I probably got home around 2.15 last night, and I, I can't tell you the last time I saw the uh, other side of midnight. Yes. It was 2 a.m. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so after that four hours, I was like, yep, I'm good. I am good. But, he, but having said that, of course, he could have done another four-hour show immediately after, not repeated a song, and it would have been a great show. I, I mean, it absolutely is. is. The depth, the depth of his, um, uh, you know, his catalog and the choices he makes, yeah. the covers he does. So that's what's, you know, it's unbelievable. Peter, do you have a theory on why he's hitting this four-hour mark so often now? Um, you know, I mean, it's hard not to think that he's realizing this can't go on forever. You know, he's talked himself about, you know, the, the, the light, you know, coming down at you down the train tunnel, Yeah. you know, getting brighter and brighter, you know, we've been talking about that for, for a while, you know, he's got to realize, it's like, we're talking about how long can they do this? You right. know, he's got it in the back of his head, you know, and I mean, the, the one thing that really struck me, both of these last two shows, um, uh, that I saw him um, on this tour, he the, the look on his face at, at the very end and, and his reluctance to leave the stage, I mean, he, he seemed, you know, like he would have stayed out there all night if he could have. Um, and he always, you know, he always looks happy and grateful at the end of a, a show. But this was something different. It, it, was, it, was, it was more. Um, and especially last night. Um, it just, you know, to, to the point where people were commenting, it, you know, it was this sort of satisfied but sad, um, you know, expression. And, and um, you could sort of, you know, and I, and I could see where, you know, he might be thinking, you know, this is, you know, hopefully this will go on, but I don't know how long it will, and I'm going to leave everything up here. You know, there is, I am, I'm going to, you know, um, you know, not, not, not leave anything behind and, um you know, so maybe that's it. It's 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 hard to say, but clearly he was a man with a mission. I mean, this was by design. I, I and, think uh, so. And when I, um, you know, I have said a couple of times that I think the band all realize that the road in front of them is shorter than the road behind them, and they right. have enjoyed playing together, like savoring every moment. Like, we don't know how many more times we're going to get this, and so I'm going to be present in the moment each time. Um, and I think he is desperate. We talked about this last time, but I truly think after seeing, like, when he brought the little two- or three-year-old to do Waiting on a Sunny Day, you know, he's ready to be a grandpa. And, um, Peter, I will tell you, when the couple came on stage – during Jersey Girl for the engagement, no one was smiling bigger than Bruce. I mean, he uh, well, looked he, so yeah. happy. Yeah, he loves his audience, and he, you know, and, and I think uh, young people in particular, the fact that they're even there really energizes him. Yes. Um, that, you know, not that he doesn't appreciate us old folk right. who are still coming out 25 years later or more. Um, but you could tell that the, you know, the, the young blood there energizes him. And, and I think, you know, sort of the other thing that, that can't not, um, you know, be at least somewhere in his brain is, you know, we've, we've lost a lot of greats just this year. Yes. You know, and, and he's done tributes to all of them. Yes. As they've, as they've gone, um, you know, and, and it's, you know, and it's still, for me, it's still hard to believe we're living in a world without David Bowie and without Prince. Um. And he, and he's still out there, you know, Bruce is still out there, you know, bringing it every night. And I think that, you know, that, who knows? I mean, I don't want to psychoanalyze him from a distance, but could have something to do, you know, with the fact that he's leaving it all up there. I, I think you're right. Um, what did you think of the Vanity Fair article? Well, believe it or not, I've only read snippets. I'm a print guy okay. from way back, so I'm determined to get a copy of that darn thing. I sit down and read it, and I haven't been able to find it in a single store around here yet. So I, I resisted the temptation to read it straight through on online, um, but I, you know, I've read enough, to, you know, to to get a sense of it. And, I, and it sounds like, um, you know, he, I mean, he's really laying it bare. Um, you I know, think I so. Think good for him for talking about, you know, the issues he's faced. And I mean, I for one, you know, I knew from that New Yorker piece a few years back, and and from other you know, profiles and, and books written about him that he'd struggled with depression and, you know, that, but for some reason I had it in my head that this was behind him. Yeah. Um, 
but and I get but I guess it never really is. And you know, and the fact that he's he's you know grappled with it as recently as as within the last few years, um, I think good for him for um, for talking about that. I think it's it's important and it's. You know, and it's interesting. I was talking to my kids about it, and they're, you know, like my son who's who's fourteen and or fifteen now, um, about Bruce's depression. Like, what does he have to be depressed about? It's like, you have no idea. You know, it's like, um, you know, you, you think of oh, somebody's rich, they're famous, they have everything they could want, and I think, um, you know, particularly if you're younger, you don't understand, you know, that this is, you know, it's a disease. You know, this is something that that plagues so many people. Um, you know, and I think that is something Bruce has always done, you know, he's used, his, he's felt the responsibility to use his platform, whether it's politically or, you know, in this case, you know, I, I think to, to let, you know, the other people who are uh, experiencing that know that, hey, you can get through this. Um, so, yeah, I look forward to, to reading it all once I get my hands on that print um, edition. I, I had to stop at the grocery store on the way home, and, um, and you know, I'm looking, and I found it in the grocery store, so I picked it up, and I'm so excited that I'm holding it in my hand. Um, I don't know if you've read the part about the um, writer talking about Born to Run and this meaning, uh, this other meaning to it. Have you read that yet? I know. I don't think I. Okay, then I'm gonna I'm gonna move on because I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> but we will have you back on to discuss this. Um, right. after, after yes, after we. That. Yes, after we did. Um, so. Um, how your thought is he's going to be pretty pretty bare about everything in the book? Well, it's interesting. I, I I'm curious to to see. And it's like I have um, you know I've been talking to my my wife and my sister in law who who are huge fans also going way back. And my sister in law gets much more um, sort of into his his personal like his his marriage. And things like that, which right. I'm not interested in. She's like, he's not going to talk about cheating on Patty or doing this or doing that. And I said, somehow, I said, first of all, I don't know if that is something that has happened, and I really don't care. And I'm sort of hoping he doesn't, um, even if it has. I, I, I don't think that's what people want to hear, you know, sort of the dirt on his personal life. I think they want right. to hear what, you know, um, what formulated, you know, what helped to formulate his career and his approach to it and his writing and. Um, so I hope that's what it's about, and that he's going to be very frank and honest uh, about, you know, um, mistakes he's made and, um, you know, times maybe when he's be behaved, you know, ways that he's later regretted for whatever reason uh, in terms of sort of professionally and musically and um, that type of thing. But I, I'm hoping, it, you know, I don't think it's going to be a tell-all. No, uh, I don't think so either. You know, either. Go gossip dish, and, you know, or at least maybe I hope it's not. I, I really don't think it will. No, I, I think he will talk about his relationship with his parents, and I'm interested to hear that because I think that is, um, you know, I, I mentioned um, to the USA Today uh, podcast, uh, Dad Rock, you know, I sent in when Merle Haggard died, it felt like I lost my father all over again because how much dad loved Merle Haggard. And, mm -hmm. and you know, and I think all of us have uh, parent issues, even if you have a great relationship with your parents. And I'm interested about that. Um, you know, I don't – I'm curious because neither one of them speak of – uh, you know, his first marriage, neither one of them really talk about it. And in the Carlin book, it was kind of, you know, he kind of said that, yeah, there were a lot of mistakes and they moved on. Um, but I really would like to hear his thoughts on where he was when he decided he needed to go off on his own without the E Street Band. Yeah, I think that would really sort of be fascinating to see, um, to hear him him talk about. It. I mean, there's, um, you know, I, I think, it, and there's still a lot of sort of um, divisiveness, I think, amongst um, fans who, you know, are still sort of mad about that. Yeah, you know, which is, yeah. Years later. Um, and it's hard not to, you know, on the one hand, you know, you say, oh, think of all those years they could have they could have been together. You know, putting out great music and touring. But I, I just don't think it would have happened because that's not where Bruce's head was at at that right. time. And he, this is what he needed. Um, you know, and he needed to step back and he needed to raise his kids. And um, you know, and it made for a fantastic reunion when when he was finally 
ready. So I'm not, you know, so I wouldn't second guess that. But I, you're right. I would love to sort of hear, you know, what prompted him to, to finally make that break and make those very difficult phone calls and, um, you know, sort of sort of go on go on from there. And, and you know, why he decided he needed that other band. Yeah. You know, it's one thing to get rid of the E Street band. Did you really need that other band? Right. Um, which, incidentally, one t- the one time I've seen him in Jersey with the other band. Oh, okay. Um, and, uh, it was, and, and it was the first time I'd seen him, too. So I had nothing to compare it to, so I couldn't help but thinking it was anything but great. But Yeah. Um, you know, and that Jersey crowd was great. But, yeah, I, I, I'm hoping he does get into um, th- some of that. And I – to go back to um, – Chris and I both talked about the – the connection and the energy of the crowd there, um, you know, in this football field, and it felt intimate in a lot of ways. And, you know, one of the things I've noticed in, you know, um, this was my 15th show, so certainly not record-breaking. And, you know, as as we say all the time, the amount of times you've seen Bruce is not a fair barometer of how big of a fan you are. But right. Almost especially since Wrecking Ball and High Hopes, you know, he'd end with Thunder Road solo and kind of, or, you know, the E Street Band Loves You and this this whole, you know, thing. And he didn't say that in Jersey. He just said, my people. Mm-hmm. And it was it was chilling in a lot of ways that, you know, he did feel that connection still. And that this um, this protectiveness of and there's some people that don't like him, but there seems to be this you know their the love of him is very strong there, and they're proud of him. I mean, yeah, I I I, I you know I know right, you're right. There are some people who get annoyed by it. This is not from Jersey. Yeah, <laughs> that's mean I have to love for space. But I'd say, you know, but he's been a, you know, a a a great um, ambassador for New Jersey. Yes, he has. Um, you know, and I I know, you know, sort of what's not to not to like there, and um, you know, so I I can see why he's he's developed that, you know, yeah. and not and not just there, you know, they, you know, I mean, of course that's his that's his home base, but it's interesting the other pockets, you know, of of um, places that that feel a sense of ownership. With him because of you know when he was popular there at various times during his career you know be it Philly um, you know uh, Boston also has a you know um, a, a strong history with him his, his early um, you know stuff getting getting noticed on BCN mm-hmm. one of the first rock stations in the country to really pay him attention um, so he will always have those pockets and now it's interesting you know in Europe um, it seems how you know he, he's bigger than ever. You know, and in certain pockets of Europe, um, you know, he, he's, uh, you know, they have a real sense of, of ownership of him, oddly enough. So um, I guess good lucky for us, there's plenty of Bruce to go around at least. Absolutely. Now. And going back to Australia again. Yeah, that was kind of a surprise. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and it's like, and I don't know what they, I think they finally stopped calling it the River Tour, although they didn't change the font. Yes. So. <laughs> Oh, who knows what they're getting? I mean, right. you know, this could be anything. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the other thing. He seems to, um, you know, he certainly didn't have to do that. No. So you know, um, you know, hopefully it's you know nobody wants to. He, he said he'll never have a farewell tour. Nobody wants to call it that. Um, right. But he seems to be trying to get some stuff in, um, yeah. for whatever reason. So going back to your show, you it was. Well, any special moments that um, at this final, sh- you know, current show in the U.S. Were there anything that you were especially pleased with, or kind of struck you emotionally? Well, you know, I knew going in, you know, that there were a few, um, you know, holy grails, so to speak, <laughs> that he had been doing the last couple of shows. That I just had my fingers crossed. Just keep this up. Yeah. One more show. You know, in, Incident into Rosie, I mean, you know, that's, uh, you know, I've been chasing that for years. Just Incident alone. I would have taken Just Incident. Yeah. Um, but, the, but the you know, the one-two punch was, was unreal. Um, I'd never seen Kitty's Back live, and, and um, there were a few others. So just, you know, so just being able to experience that um, was great. But then, as always, there were surprises um, 
and I, the, the big one of the biggest ones for me was he did that uh, solo version of um, Fourth of July Asbury Park Sandy. Yeah. Um, which he seemed to, you never know with him. He's a showman, he could, you know, but it really seemed like he decided at that moment he was going to do it by himself. You know, it was a sign request. He said, let's do this a little different, I, you know, and he, and he tells the band, I'll tell the band when to come in. And he starts singing by himself, and um, it was just, it was so, so intimate. Um, and, you know, it seemed so heartfelt. It, it felt like, it felt brand new. It felt like a, a different a different song. Um, it almost felt like um, he was addressing um, the fans, you know, love me tonight, and I swear I'll love you forever. I mean, he yeah. did that as sort of a, a pregnant pause there. And even halfway through, you know, I think the band was thinking, okay, this is where we come in. He turns around, and, not yet. <laughs> and yeah. he keeps going because he, he was feeling it. You, get to, you know, so to experience that kind of a moment, you know, I think with an artist that feels spontaneous and, and feels heartfelt, um, and you're in this huge cavernous stadium, but it feels like you're the only one there, um, sort of the fact that, that he's able to, to bring that to the table is, you know, for me is, is always what makes it, like you said, it's why, you know, you, you could see a show four times, you know, even though yeah. you know two-thirds of it's going to be the same, to, to, to capture that, that one moment. So that was, um, you know, certainly a big one. And, and um, you know, the, the, um, he, he did a solo acoustic version of Long Walk, Walk Home, which, which was very, very good, um, you know, and I think he you know, gave a little speech about um, the uh, sort of uh, political state of politics in America and letting the, the genie of our worst tendencies out of the bottle. And, you know, you right. get, it was not a, uh, you know, a screed by any, by any stretch, but it was I thought, very poignant and very appropriate for that song. You know, 41 shots, you know, another sort of political statement was the most intense I've, I've ever, you know, I've seen him do that. Just phenomenal. Um, you know, so just, you know, the, the, you know, so these moments sort of just kept coming. You know, they're the ones that I sort of expected, the ones that, you know, the ones I didn't expect. I mean, if I had, you know, one quibble, um, and this is something the fans have been talking around for a long time, you know, I, I don't think we need all the sign <laughs> requests right there yeah. in the middle. Um, I, I feel like it did get them a little bit off track last night. Right. Um, yeah, I think good for him for sort of wanting. And, and then you find out later that, you know, three of them were on the set list anyway. Yeah, so right. we're talking about the, the showmanship, you know, we want right. to make it make it look but still I, I felt like it got him you know a little bit off track you know in the middle but then he he was you know right right back on board yeah and you know in a lot of ways the sign roulette is um no pun intended but uh you know with like when i was in houston several years ago and one of the signs was one step up not played with the full band and since blank and you know, he brought it up and he says, we do not know this one. You know, you can see that on YouTube. And he basically did it solo. And then toward the end, he said, Inter, you know, band softly and played it um, is kind of my version of your solo Sandy, right? Where you go, right. I hadn't expected this magic. I can't believe I'm here. And, you know. Yes, it will be just – for people who weren't there and see it online, you go, thank heavens that we live in a world where you can <laughs> see these things. Um, but, yes, it is just something where there's – you know, the, you capture magic, you know, lightning in a bottle, and it's just something amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so interesting to see. And I was also pleased, maybe because I, I was fortunate enough to be a little closer last night on, on the floor – um, but the crowd was was you know attentive and you know clearly just um, you know soaking it all in. So I have been to stadium shows as we all have, where yeah. it, it's clear that a certain number of people are there to say they were there and to drink a lot of really expensive beer. Yes, you know and yak during mm -hmm. the slow song. So you know which is a, a pet peeve of mine. Absolutely. Um, but I didn't see that last night. I mean, he That's good. had everybody, um, you know, that even during these quiet moments, um, you know, it, it seemed like, you know, he, he didn't have to uh, add, tell anybody to shut up <laughs> like yeah. he has at certain points in his career. Although I'd advocate for him to start doing that again. I think there are certain times when it's appropriate. Yeah, I uh, agree. He, thankfully, he didn't need to last night. Um, Peter, are, is the website... Are you playing anything special with the book or 
coverage? What are you just going to kind of collect things as you normally do? Um, well, we're going to see. I am going to read it. Oh, of course. At some point. Um, and you'll definitely hear my remarks on that. I, I was fortunate enough to um, get a, um, a ticket to um, his uh, Bruce's book signing in Cambridge, Mass. Nice. In October. So I will. Please, you will be hearing all about my four seconds with Bruce Springsteen. Yes. When I go through that line. You know, yes. I'll be thinking for the next month or so exactly. All right, what, what will I say to him during yes. those four seconds? Um, My only uh, regret so look- is I, I have no jealousy about people hitting it, and I'm so glad for them. I'm a little bitter he didn't even come close to Texas, but I'll get over that. Um, I'm a little surprised they don't have a professional photographer kind of that you know could later email you. Um, you know, with your camera is going to be just a little awkward, but – you know, I, it's true, and it's a a lost revenue stream. Yes. Is, what is what is Landau thinking? Right. You get seven take you hand you a card. You got fifteen ninety five for the four yeah. by six. You know, um, that's why they don't call me about these things. I have well, no idea. Because um, you know, I go to comic book conventions and uh, Doctor Who conventions and things, and you know, it's. Um, you know, it's fifty bucks to get your picture taken. It's a hundred bucks to take your with William Shatner and or Stan Lee or someone like that. And um and you know, it's a professional photographer and they keep it rolling, you know, where you you really just have time to say, Hi, you know, love your work and they're personal and they're pretty, but they keep it rolling because that's their revenue stream. So, um I do love that he's not signing, you know, don't bring anything. Um, but I think it's going to be cool to get a autograph book and to spend that four seconds next to him <laughs> and getting a picture, right? Yeah, it's fun. I mean, it is fun. And, um, you know, I think I was when I heard he was going to do book events, I pictured you get a theater, he reads a chapter, talks a little bit about it. Like I didn't expect a, you know, whip people in and have take pictures with their cell phone. It's it's not what I would have predicted. Um, but you know, good for good for him. You know, to want to you know make some fans happy, get those pictures taken, and um, you know, and and send them on through. But um, so yes, I will be um, you know definitely covering that as it comes. And um, you know, we also have we we like to do something special every year on his birthday, whether it's um, collecting. You know, sort of the the tributes and the the reports on that, and um, uh, you know, doing something ourselves that we uh, um, the blog staff is hard at work coming up with this okay. year's uh, uh, birthday topic. Um, so um, yeah, well, you know, fortunately for us, there's plenty to. Um, I mean, like you said, this is I, I did a post this week called the Bruce Springsteen News Explosion because it seems like it, it, there's so much happening we can't keep up with it. Oh, Whether I totally it's, agree. It's, yeah, he's doing stand up for heroes. He's going to Australia. He's doing book signings. You know, it's you know plenty plenty for us to uh, to keep us busy. And we've been a, you know, I, I've always considered us more of a news site than a fan site. You know, yes. get you know get the information out. You know, certainly have commentary and humor wherever appropriate. Um, and uh, you know, we'll as long as there's news to report, we'll be there to report it. So, Peter, I know I've kept you for a while, so I'm, I won't keep you too much longer, but talk to me about this. I I don't know how I've missed this, but you do a comic strip. <laughs> I do. Well, it's recent. It's okay, recent. so um, talk to me about this. Well, it's interesting, and there is a Bruce connection there. This is um, – I, 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 first of all, I don't want anybody to get the idea that I have any artistic talent whatsoever – um, I am the writer, and I work with a very talented cartoonist um, named Dave London, who I've known since college, um, and we got it in our heads before we even graduated that this would be a great way to make a living, yes. to draw a comic strip. And this was back when people did make a living doing that. That yes. was the, you know, the height of Calvin and Hobbes and, and Bloom County and you know, all, the, all the biggies in the, in the late 80s there. Uh, so we gave that a shot for a few years, and um, you know, we, we got a few bites um, from syndicates and you know, got published in in um, various groups of papers. And then, you know, what happens? You get married, you have kids, you yeah. get your career but suddenly winds up taking more time. You're, you're what used to, you used to consider your day job. Um, and we sort of got away from it. And now we're both at the point where our kids are a little older. Suddenly we have a little bit more time, not a lot. 
And we said, you know, let's let's try this again. So last February we launched um, this comic strip called Pet Peeves. Um, you know, it's a, basically it's a web comic. It's available online for free. Um, and, uh, you know, we distribute on Facebook and, and Instagram. And it's a family of four. Um, they're basically just like you and me, except they happen to be dogs, and all the characters in the strip happen to be animals. But uh, they're basically humans. He just, Dave just loves drawing animals. And um, the father is a huge Springsteen fan. Um, you're probably not surprised to hear. And we've already yes. done um, – there was one strip set at a um, – at a Springsteen concert where, um, you know, uh, the, uh, the joke is that the father passes out before the end of the show, long before Springsteen has, has given up, um, wakes up at the end just long enough to ask if he did incident. Um, and when I was at the show last night, my collaborator, Dave, texted me during the show and said, did he do incident? I said, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, he did. So, um, so yeah, so I, I would encourage people to, you know, search pet peeves, by London and Chianka, and it'll come up in various places. I encourage you to check that out, and we hope to, you know, someday soon, uh, you know, bring that to some major, major daily uh, newspaper or and or website near you. Okay, uh, I will. Um, I will do a search and put the link in it. Um, I have not. I, you know, I've I've been kind of caught it just at different times on Facebook, so. Um, the ones I've read, I've absolutely loved, so I certainly need to go back and um, figure out a way to, you know, go from the beginning and kind of see these, because it's – the ones I've seen are really funny. So, now you've tried oh, that's great. Funny. Thank you so much. Yeah, if you yeah. go to our Facebook page, um, I think they're, they're still all up there. Okay, good. Um, so um, – I sent an email to my lovely bride saying, I'm just telling you, if we win the lottery, we're heading to Australia. <laughs> you know, I want to go to Australia anyway, but to see him over there. Um, yeah. I I am hoping he does a solo tour sometime, uh, you know, for this mythical solo album we're supposed to get. Um, yes, I would, you know, I, I would completely agree, and I know they've been talking about that for a while, but he, he can't seem to pull the trigger on it. But I, I, the Devil of the Dust tour remains, you know, one of my absolute favorite, you know, uh, live experiences for Bruce. Just the, the fact that you're able, you know, again, I was fortunate enough to, to be up close and um, to hear the stories and to be able to sit <laughs> and listen yes. and really concentrate on what he was saying and what, and what he was doing and to see sort of the virtuosity there that – is maybe unexpected, you know. I mean, you know, he's a great artist, but to see him play the different instruments and and you know the way he's able to engage on uh, such a personal level. So yeah, I completely agree. I, I think that would be terrific. And and I imagine at some point, the invariable time, maybe he'll be eighty, maybe yeah. he'll be ninety. <laughs> but when he has to slow down, I still see him taking his guitar and going out to you know um, theaters and 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 halls or whatever whatever it is. And doing shows like that, um, you know, he'll be the BB King of, of his age, uh, and uh, you know, I look forward to that, but not too soon. Absolutely, I Sue. I do want to say I did agree that your um, uh, open letter to Springsteen from your older fans was hilarious, and okay. I was smiling at each one, and I loved the punchline on best second thought. You know, don't change a thing, and um, even though I knew that's what was coming. Um, and I also was going, I hope people understand the tongue firmly in cheek in this. Uh, <laughs> right. So it was. I say nine out of ten did, and yeah. whenever I write something like that, I know I will hear from that one out of ten yeah. who were born without the sarcasm gene, and there's nothing they can do about it. <laughs> yes. Um, Peter, this was a blast, and thank you so much for visiting with me again. Um, I, we'll have to do it again, and it won't take us a year this time. Um, if someone wants to find you, how can they? Um, the easiest way is to use our friend Google. Yes. And Google Blogness on the edge of town, or even just Blogness. I think we've been out there long enough now that we're the first thing that comes up. Um, and from there, you'll find links to our Facebook page and um, you know various other places you can find us. So please do uh, check us out. And we will be eagerly waiting to see what you're doing for the birthday uh, coming up. And uh, yeah, yeah. so am I. I guess we better figure something out. (laughs) Um, So um, 
And if you want to be on the podcast and talk about Bruce and all that applies, send me an email at setlustingbruce at gmail.com. We have a Facebook page and also a Twitter account, uh, Set Lusting Bruce. Please check that out. And I would really appreciate you going to iTunes to rate and review us because it helps me find listeners. Thank you, Peter. I appreciate it. Happy to do it. Happy to do it.